Okay, welcome to Unit 6, Day 5. These are the post-lab questions that you will be working on um, after you've completed the lab. So at this point, you should have collected your data, done your calculations, completed the pre-lab, and you're using all that information to identify your unknown. So let's say, for example, you determine in um, from your data that your unknown was, so I'll zoom in, was this one right here, the iron sulfate tetra, tetra means four hydrate, so the iron sulfate with the four waters, okay? So let's say I'm gonna write that at the top. Actually, I'm gonna write it in optional, uh, the question here. So based on the percent composition, what is the identity of your unknown hydrate? And um, so what I would write here, using that sentence frame, is my unknown is FeSO4, and I had the one with the four hydrates, so put a dot and then a big coefficient of four, right? And then write H2O, okay? So I identify what it is. Now I'm gonna explain. I know this because, well, the because would be my percent composition, the percent comp of my anhydrous salt was 60, I'm going to uh, sort of make up a number here, 68.00%, which matches the percent comp of this hydrate. Okay, so key thing here, I don't think I can zoom out anymore, and this is kind of big, but what I said was my unknown is FeSO4.4H2O, and I know this because the percent composition of my anhydrous salt was 68%, which matches the percent composition of this hydrate. And so the key here is that you're showing me that you know how you found out what your unknown is. Okay, so that's question one. Question two is writing a balanced chemical equation to show the decomposition of your unknown hydrate. So to write the balanced chemical equation, if this is your unknown hydrate, when you heated it up, the reaction that you exposed it to um, or that took place was this. You had your hydrate, and remember those waters are loosely attached. And then we break this down through a decomposition reaction and remove those waters. So it breaks apart into its two parts. All right, I'm gonna color code this to make it easier. It breaks apart into its sulf, the anhydrous part. So you should write FeSO4, everyone should have that in their formula. And then, how many waters do you have here? Four, make sure that you put that four there, four H2O. That's your water part. I think I used the wrong color coding, but anyway. So, um, so these are the two things that you should break it down. Super important. The number of water should match the, the same number that you see in the formula. So if you see a 4 in front of H2O over here, there should be a 4 in front of H2O over there. All right, so you start off with one re product, uh, one reactant, and it breaks down to these two products. All right, question two. How many moles of your hydrate did you use? So for that problem, what you would do is if you go back to your data, You're going to use the number that you got from calculation one, so the 2.95 grams. So for me, that's what I'm using. Your number should be different from mine, right? So it should not be the same as mine. So moles, okay, okay. That's what I'm trying to solve for, okay? Um, let me actually just start this over again. So I know my mass is equal to 2.95 grams, right? That's my given, that's what I'm given, and I'm trying to find my moles. So I'm going from mass to moles. Remember we did this, okay. And in order to go from mass to moles, I'm gonna use the, the conversion factor. One mole is equal to the molar mass. All right, so I've already identified my hydrate as FeSO4 for H2O, so I'm gonna use that molar mass, okay? So I'm gonna use the molar mass of whatever my hydrate is. Okay, so go ahead and you look on this table here in the B 
beginning of the first page of your lab, find the molar mass that's written underneath of that hydrate, so 224.00. grams okay all right so now that I know what I'm doing here I'm gonna now use my dimensional analysis all right I take my given 2.95 grams put it over one just to make it into a fraction then I'm gonna take this conversion factor and I'm going to arrange it so that the units I don't want, my given units, they're going to cancel out. Now, in order for them to cancel out, they have to be opposite. So this conversion factor has one mole and 224 grams. I'm going to put the 224 grams on the bottom so that these units can cancel out, right? Because they have to be opposite to cancel. And then on top, I put the one mole, okay? And then I would do my math, 2.95 divided by 224.00 and that gives me 0, 0.0 uh, sorry 132 moles okay all right the next one is asking about the percent composition of water in your unknown so for this part here you could if you wanted to do sort of the work that we did previously the mass of water that you lost divided by the mass of the entire uh, compound but that's a lot of work so instead of doing that you've already calculated the percent composition of your anhydrous salt right so what you're going to do to get the percent composition of the water remember that the overall percent must equal to a hundred so the percent composition of water is going to be 100 minus the percent composition of the anhydrates So in my case here, what I would do to calculate it is I would do 100. This is my work that I did previously. I got the percent composition of hydrates. That would be calculation number three, 67.80. Plug that into my calculator. 100 minus 67.8 and that gives you 32.20% okay and the reason why this works is because uh, when you add up the percents of things they should equal to 100 so your, your anhydrous and your water are the two parts of this uh, compound of the hydrate so therefore when you add up their percentages you go 100 all right the next question is for honors Kim only and this question asks which substance do you think will have a higher percent composition by mass um, of water is it going to be this one or uh, that's actually a mistake here one of these should be magnesium it will be corrected in your document okay so would it be the iron sulfate hexahydrate or will it be the magnesium sulfate hexahydrate now in order to do that what you want to think about is um, we know the equation for the percent composition of water to be mass of H2O over the mass of whatever the uh, hydrate is right now the mass of H2O is that different in these molecules let's take a look so this one has six H2O's and this one has six H2O so is the mass going to be different no, so the mass of the H2O is going to be the same. Okay, the part that's going to be different, however, will be the mass of the of the hydrate. So, what you need to do is you need to figure out the molar masses of the hydrate. Now, the molar mass of the one hydrate is in their tables. So you can get for the iron one. You can get that in your table. in the pre-lab okay but for this one here you're gonna have to calculate the molar mass okay so your molar mass of your hydrate will determine what happens to the percent composition of, of water so if this number goes up whichever one has the highest uh, percent 
comp, um, sorry, molar mass of the hydrate, what's going to, what's that going to do to the percent composition of H2O? Is that going to make it go up or down? So you're using that understanding to figure out which one will have the higher percent. All right, we're looking for the higher percent. Okay. So do you want the one that has the highest molar mass of the hydrate or the one with the lower molar mass for your hydrate? Okay. All right, last question that I'm gonna go over, and this one is a challenge problem. This one's like sort of an error analysis. So let's say the student did not wait, dry the hydrate completely. So that goes back to the date data table. And this is optional, so if it's, you're not choosing to do it, you can not watch the rest of this. But if you are choosing to do it, and you're, or you're just curious, um, so that means that the numbers that are for the mass of the anhydrous salt, if it's not dried, will it be higher or lower than expected, right? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. So is it higher or lower? Okay, that's the mass of the anhydrous. All right, and so based on that, um, if it's not dry, if this number goes up, what's going to happen to the percent anhydrous, uh, anhydrous salt and hydrate. Or if be not being dry lowers this number, if that number goes down, what happens to this, right? So that's what you're basically answering here. So, um, and then, so then the next question is how does that affect the percent comp of the anhydrous salt? Okay, so that's what you're doing there. All right, that's it for the post lab question video. I hope you found this video helpful. Have a quality day.